everybody, I'm Sam and welcome to my channel. Today I would like to show you how to make uh, this little shamrock. I have to admit that I'm not uh, a tutorial person, but uh, since I published this pattern a few days ago on my Ravelry page, it got a lot of positive feedback, so I thought it would have been nice to show you how easy it is to knit this little decoration. This is a great little shamrock that you can turn into a brooch or a button or any sort of decoration for your jumpers, hat, your bag and it only requires a few meters of yarn so it's perfect for some scrap yarn that you have lying around the house. I knitted mine uh, using a 2.5 millimeters or US 1.5 size uh, circular needles with the magic loop technique and any sock yarn that I could find around the house. And this gave me a 4 centimeters or 1 inch ish size of shamrock. If you change uh, the weight of the yarn or indeed uh, the size of the needles, you may get different sizes of shamrock. So it would be very nice to experiment and have an idea of different sizes. In the pattern I don't give any gauge or recommendation as this is just a little tiny decoration. As I said, this is knitted in the round using the magic loop technique but uh, if you are handy enough, you definitely can use double pointed needles. Okay, without any further ado, let's get into the materials and the process. If you want to follow along, you can find the pattern. It's a free download in my Ravelry page and I'm going to put the link below in the description. For the project, you would need of course some yarn and I choose a very Irish green sock yarn some long circular needles, a pair of scissors, a darning needle and of course a brooch backing. So let's get into the pattern. Using Judy's magic cast on and uh, you can find the tutorial here below or linked in the pattern, make a knot, slip the knot into your needle, needle at the bottom and uh, loop your working yarn through the needles eight times in order to create eight stitches. Keeping the stitches secure with your left hand, pull the needle at the bottom and start knitting through as if you were knitting normally. This can be quite tricky and uh, definitely it requires uh, some practice, but it's not impossible. And after a few trials, this will become probably your favorite cast on, not just for the shamrock, but for any type of uh, toe up socks. When you're finished, pull the string of your needles, tie up your stitches, and turn your work upside down. Now, take your bottom needle, pull it, and start knitting again as you were normally knitting through. Knit the next eight stitches. Now it's time for an increase round. So knit one. Make one by knitting through the back loop of the stitch below. So you pull up the stitch below and you knit through the back loop. It's uh, quite a trick if you're working with a very thin yarn. Knit two stitches and slip two stitches. This will give your leaf the classic heart shape of a shamrock leaf. Knit two stitches and once again make one stitch by lifting the leg of the previous stitch and knit through the back loop. Knit one and you completed needle one. Repeat this for needle two. When the first round of increases is completed, you should have 10 stitches on each needle for a total of 20 stitches. 
Now it's time for a plain round, just to remember to slip once again the middle two stitches. We do then on round three encounter another increasing round. Knit one, make one by knitting through the back loop of the stitch below, knit eight stitches, and here we want to knit those stitches, not slip them, make one and knit the final one. Once again, repeat this process for needle two and tied up all of your stitches. After round three or the second increasing round you should have 24 stitches on your needles separated 12 on each needle. It's now time to knit two flat rounds. After those you will start the decreases at round six. Knit one, knit two together through the back loop, knit six, knit two together, and knit one. Repeat this for the other needle. The change between knitting through the back loop and knitting two together from the first decrease versus the second decrease will give you the shape of the point of the leaf. After this you will knit a plain round and then three more decreasing rounds. So on your stitches you will have uh, 16 stitches, 12 stitches, 8 stitches and finally 6. Always divided 3 on 3. Now cut the length of the yarn, thread to a darning needle and just thread the remaining stitches through the darning needles, pull firmly and then you will have your first leaf. Repeat this three times if you want to make a shamrock or four if you want to make a clover. Now let's see how to make the stem. Once again a knot loop through. Now using your favorite cast on type, just cast on five stitches. I like to use a long tail cast on, but here doesn't really matter. All the cast on rows will be hidden behind the shamrock. Now put all your stitches through the other needle so that the length of yarn or the working yarn is on the far side of your knitting side. Knit through the five stitches. This is really fiddly. But you will get through. Now once again slip the yarn to the other needle. Knit across the five stitches. Remember to keep the working yarn behind your work. And work like this until you have about four or five centimeters, I would say around an inch. You reach your desired length, just bind off, leaving a very long tail. Now it's time to construct your shamrock. You have the three leaves and the stem. Using a darning needle, thread through the tail of the stem and go through the first three stitches of your leaf. It doesn't matter which three you choose, the top of the bottom, so the ones that were on needle one or needle two, because the leaves are actually symmetrical. When you thread them, be careful of maintaining all the tails at the back of the leaves. Pull the yarn and now try to shape it as better as you can. The next step I'd recommend is to thread your needle only through the front of the leaves without catching the stem. Pull tightly and remember to keep on the back all the tails. 
Do this process once again, and this third time, including the stem stitches, so you can actually tight everything together. And here you have it. You can now safely cut the length of yarn that were pending there, and I like to use some glue gun to attach a brooch backing. You don't really need to block it. It's just perfect like it is. I really hope you enjoy this little tutorial and I can't wait to see your projects. Please let me know in the comment if you made any modifications to the pattern or you choose uh, any different type of yarns or needle size. I am always very interested and curious to see all your crafty endeavors. If you like this video, please consider to subscribe to my channel. This will help massively my little channel to have some visibility. Also, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And don't forget to share it. Have a wonderful St. Patrick's Day and sending you a big hug from Ireland.